Hey everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar, How to Send an Email Campaign with MailChimp. My name is Brittany. Hi, I'm Cole, and we'll be your host today. Let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda of topics. First, we'll provide a quick overview of what campaigns are and cover a few things you need to set up in your MailChimp account, like domain verification, before you can start sending emails. Campaigns. Next, we'll dive into MailChimp's drag and drop editor, showing you how to add content, preview, test, and send your email campaign. Finally, we'll wrap up with the next steps to get you, get you going on your road to success, including tips on analyzing and optimizing your email campaign performance. If you have any questions during today's webinar, you can navigate to MailChimp.com help to access all of our free resources. With that, we're going to start today's webinar with a few foundational concepts, then we'll move on to setting up campaigns in our MailChimp account. First, what is a campaign? In MailChimp, a campaign is a marketing effort that coordinates email, ads, and other channels to achieve a business goal. Within that campaign, we have various types of content that you can create, distribute, and measure. Most people think email when they think of campaigns, but that's just one type of content. Campaigns also include landing pages, ads, and recurring email series called customer journeys in MailChimp, and so much more. But let's turn back to the focus of our webinar, email campaigns. Before you start sending them, the main thing to remember is that you need to have subscribers in your MailChimp audience. If you need help with importing contacts, we have a webinar all about this process that you can find at MailChimp.com workshops. Keep in mind that you're only able to send email campaigns to subscribers who have given you permission to market to them. If someone has unsubscribed, you can't send them emails and MailChimp will automatically make sure that you don't. One more thing to keep in mind before you send email campaigns, you'll need to verify your domain in MailChimp. When we say verify your domain, we essentially mean that you confirm the address that you're sending from in MailChimp. So, for example, we use a fictional plant business in our webinars called The Potted Planter. That business sends emails from the address amelia at the potted planter la.com. This, verifi this verification process ensures that we own that email address and helps prevent someone else from using it. We'll head into our account to show you where and how to verify your email domain. Here we are on our home page. We'll click on the website option in our navigation menu, and from this secondary menu, we'll select domains. Here's the section for email domains. Here, you'll select the Add and Verify Domain button, and then you'll enter the email address that you'd like to send from. You'll then receive a verification email to this address, and all you need to do is click it to verify. You can come back to this page to confirm later. Notice on the same page that there is an option to authenticate your domain once it's been verified. This is an optional but recommended step to provide an added layer of security when sending out campaigns in MailChimp. Now from here, we're going to head to the settings section of our account to set our email builder preference. To get there, we'll select our profile icon, and in the pop-up menu, we'll choose Profile. From the tabs across this page, we'll choose Settings and then Details from the dropdown. MailChimp currently offers two email builders, the Classic Builder and the New Builder. If you've been using MailChimp for a while, you may be familiar with the Classic Builder and our traditional drag-and-drop content blocks. The new builder has an updated interface and a lot of new features, like the option to undo or redo changes you make to, to your emails. Today we're going to be creating our email with the new builder, and we want to make sure we're on the same page. If you're already using the new builder, great, you're all set. If not, you can always change your builder preference on this page here. So now that we've set our builder preference, let's get into creating a campaign from scratch. From here, let's set a select Campaigns in the Navigation menu, which will bring us to our All Campaigns page. In the Campaigns menu, you'll also see Campaign Manager. Campaign Manager is a powerful end-to-end -end marketing tool with advanced uh, scheduling capabilities. Think of Campaign Manager as your brand's single source of truth, where you can plan, execute, analyze, and optimize your marketing goals. After Campaign Manager, you'll see Templates. 
MailChimp provides different template options to keep you on to keep you to help you find the right look for your email marketing. And you can find your saved templates as well as purchase new ones. But let's get going on creating our email campaign. To do this, we can either select the Create Pencil icon in the navigation menu or the Create Campaign button. Clicking on the Create Campaign button will bring us to our campaign creation menu. Our focus today will be on sending a regular email campaign, which is a bulk email sent to many contacts at once. Let's select the Design Email button here in the regular email tile. When you create a regular email campaign in MailChimp, you'll use this checklist-style campaign builder to add recipients, choose your settings, and design your content. Depending on when you created your account, you may be brought directly to the design email step of this checklist. That said, you'll still be able to add this information in once you leave the email builder. We'll also be coming back to this information, but to begin, let's click Design Email in the Content section. MailChimp's new email builder gives you the tools to quickly design beautiful campaigns. You can start with one of our stylish templates, then customize it with your own images, text, and branding. Mix and match different content blocks and make changes directly in the template. We do want to point out that this email builder is new and we're still rolling out updates. If you are seeing something slightly different in your own account, that could be why. You're first going to see the various content block options. MailChimp uses drag and drop content blocks to make it easy to customize your MailChimp emails. We'll come back to add some of these to our email in just a moment. When you design an email campaign in MailChimp, you'll typically begin with a template. Here, in this tab, you can preview and change templates to suit your needs. You'll see we have custom email designs too. These emails were created with MailChimp's Creative Assistant feature. The Creative Assistant collects colors, fonts, images, and logos from your website and landing pages. and uses those elements to fill in your brand kit and then creates multi-channel designs that match. You can use these templates to quickly generate a stylish set of graphics for your marketing content. If you're curious about a template, just hover over it and click Preview to see what the layout looks like. If the template works for you, just click Apply to select it. If you've already been working on your template, you'll see the option to continue with existing content. Or if you want to start anew, you can choose to start with a clean template. We'll select continued with existing content to move on, which will bring us back to our content block options. You can use content blocks to add or edit text, images, products, promo codes, and more to your email designs. MailChimp offers a lot of different content block options. Let's first just talk through a couple of these options. You can select layouts from the top menu and choose from various block options to add a section that includes multiple text or image blocks. Clicking back to content, you can see that you can use product content blocks to add items from your connected online store. Each block is designed to contain a product name, custom description, price, and call to action button. And if you turn on e-commerce tracking in your email settings, your report will show purchase revenue. Additionally, you can use the app's content block to add information from connected accounts outside of your MailChimp account. Before we start adding any of these to our emails, let's go to the Styles tab in the sidebar to set some of the colors and styles for our email. We'll begin by selecting a primary color for our email. To do this, We'll choose body color here in the email tab. We can then choose a color we like, search for our brand colors by hex code, or pick a color that works from us from the swatches selection. Since we're creating a campaign for our fake brand we use for educational purposes, the potted planter, we want to select a background color that aligns with our brand colors. We're going to choose this green here in the swatches menu. We'll now select done to go back and select more styles. We'll select background color to choose or add a second background color to the margins of our email. We like the green we already selected, so we'll choose to make that color take up the entire backdrop here. Looks good. We'll select done to go back once more and select link color. We like the black that's already selected, 
So now we'll just go, now, so now we'll just choose the done button and go back to the sidebar and select add. Now to add content. We could just drag and drop a content block anywhere we'd like in our email. As we mentioned, you'll use content blocks to add different types of content to your email. For example, a button block would link to a website or a file to download, and you can use a video block to add a video with or without a caption. Let's take some time to start adding in our content. As you can see, there's some placeholder text as well as our default logo, which we've previously set in our content studio. If you've set a default logo in the content studio as we have, the logo block automatically pulls in your layout. You can also add or replace your default logo from this block. Next, you can use this heading content block to add header text to your email. After you add or click a heading block, you can enter your text directly in the email. We're sending an email about an update in our inventory and a sale announcement. So we'll type in something to let our audience know what the email is about. Let's take a moment to do that. New plants are on the horizon. Once you add the text, you can use the editing toolbar here across the top to format it as needed. You can edit the font type, size, attributes, and alignment. And there are options to create a bulleted or numbered list, insert a link, or add merge tags. A merge tag is a label that's tied to info in an audience field, like a contact's first name. We'll talk more about this later, but for now, just know that you can use merge tags to insert personalized content into your email campaigns. Moving on to the selected content block menu, you can choose the text colors for the block and change some of the padding around the block as you want. Our current settings work for us, so now let's add some more text about our new plants and surprise sale here in this block. And to welcome our new friends, we're offering 15% off on all purchases through the end of the week. Once we're all set, let's click Done. Moving on, let's add an image. You can click on the image content block already in your template, or add one to your layout. Let's click into the image block and choose Browse Images to open your account's content studio. Content Studio organizes your images, documents, and other files in MailChimp. You can use it to store and manage the content you'll share with your audience. Here, you have the option to add a brand new image by selecting the Upload button, or you can use an image you've already added to your account. As you can see, we've already have some images uploaded here, so we'll go ahead and select one now, and then we'll choose Insert. We can then click and drag the corner marked with a circle to resize the image. If you want to make, the, if you want to make more detailed edits, you can select Edit Image here to open our photo editor. We like our image as it is currently, so we'll just click Close and go back in. In the Image menu, you can set the image alignment as left, center, right, or full. If you want the image to link to a page or profile on the web, Add a URL to the link to the field. Finally, in the Alt Text field, add descriptive text to make your email more accessible. Once set, we'll click Done. Moving on, let's talk about this button block here. Buttons are a great way to include a prominent call to action and a link to your store. Let's make some edits to it. We'll type in Buy Now. And make sure to link it to our website pottedplanterlamailchimpsites.com. When you're good to go, click Done to go back to the block menu. Now, if you want to break up your email a bit more distinctly, you can use the divider block to add a divider line to your email. To add a content block, just drag it to where you want it to go in the email. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a divider, you could also use a spacer block, seen here, to add padding in between other content blocks in your layout. Moving on, you can use these social content blocks to add icons that link to your social media accounts, so recipients can quickly find and follow you on different platforms. In the social sidebar, 
you can edit the URLs to make sure your icons link to your specific profile, and choose to delete any that you don't use by selecting the trash can icon. And then just make any adjustments to alignment and color. Now, let's click at the footer area of our email. Every MailChimp template comes with a footer content block at the bottom of the email. The footer block uses merge tags to pull in the required address and unsubscribe link, along with other content your recipients might find useful. The footer cannot be moved or removed, but you can make some changes to its content and appearance, as seen here in the footer text section. As you add content to your email, we'll suggest ways to help you improve your message. If we find any issues like a broken link or merge tag, we'll mark them with an exclamation point icon. Now remember, you can move content blocks anywhere in your template or remove them as needed. You can also duplicate a block to create an exact copy. To move content, just click the bo block you want to move. Then click and hold the drag icon, the icon with the arrows seen here, to move the content to a new location like so. If we click back on the block, you can see there's an option to duplicate it. And finally, to delete something, just select the trash can icon. But let's say we messed up and you want to add that button back. If you change your mind, you can undo the action to recover deleted content. To undo a change, click the backward arrow icon, like we just did. And if you want to redo a change that you've undone, click the forward icon. All right, I think this email is looking pretty good, Cole. <laughs> when you finish designing your email, preview and test it to make sure everything looks like you expect. To do this, select the preview button. Then click the desktop and mobile to see if the design looks right across both devices. If you've already selected an audience, you can even enable live merge tag info to see what your email will look like for each member of your audience. So for example, if you've included F name merge tag in order to pull in first name information, you could see how that would appear. As a note, if you haven't selected an audience for your email yet, you can always come back to test merge tags after you set it up. Once you're all set, click the X to exit the preview mode. You'll also want to make sure you send yourself and your colleagues test emails to see the campaign in your inboxes. You can do this by going to the drop-down arrow next to Save and Exit, and then choose Send Test Email. When you're finished designing your email, click Save and Exit. And just like that, you'll be taken back to the campaign checklist, where you can continue to set up your email. You'll see the title of the email, which is currently untitled. We'll click Edit Name and call ours Inventory Announcement and then save. Keep in mind that this title is internal and won't be seen by your customers. This title will help you remember what this email is about when you view it on the campaigns page later. Let's head to the To field. This is the area where you'll determine who will be sent this email. Click Add Recipients. Now you're able to choose which audience you'd like to send to. You can also select a specific segment or tag within that audience. We want to send our email to everyone in the potted planter audience, so we'll make sure that's selected. You may choose to personalize the to field so the recipient's name will show up in the email. For example, the recipient's inbox would display to Freddie instead of to Freddie at MailChimp.com. We'll choose that option and save. Next up, there's the From field. This will automatically populate with the information you set up in your audience defaults, like we showed earlier in this webinar. Our default is sending from our potted planter email address, but we can update the From name or the email address if we wanted to. We're all set, so we'll choose Save. Let's move on and add a subject line and optional preview text. To do this, we'll click Add Subject and enter in a subject line from the email. We are having a plant sale. This subject line is a fun way to grab our audience's attention. We'll add an emoji of a plant here too. 
The emoji picker is an easy way to add some excitement to your subject lines, especially for mobile devices. Once we're set, make sure to save. We'll now scroll to the Add a Social Post to Your Campaign section. Here, you can easily connect your social media platforms and share your campaign's content with followers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finally, let's review the Settings and Tracking section. When you create a regular email campaign, we'll enable certain tracking options by default. This includes open and click tracking, as well as e-commerce tracking if you have a connected online store. To edit the tracking options for your campaign in the Settings and Tracking section, click Edit and then check the boxes next to the tracking options you want to enable or disable. Now that you've designed your email, previewed it, sent a test email, and reviewed all of your settings, this email is ready to go. You can send it right away or schedule the email to send later. Select Schedule to find a day and time to send it out. Here's what that menu looks like. There are some other options in this window for scheduling and sending campaigns, and these are usually recommended for more international or high volume senders. Let's select Cancel to exit this pop-up. We're ready to send now. So, we'll click Send. Then, in the Ready to Send module, we'll click Send Now to confirm. And that's it. Our email has been now sent out into the world. Awesome. All right, so you've sent an email campaign in MailChimp. Nice job. Now what? Be sure to define your audience to most effectively market emails to them. In order to send an audience personalized, rel relevant content, you need to be sure who you're talking to. Be sure you're taking advantage of opportunities to find out more about your target audience. Consider auditing your signup forms to see if the information you're gathering during the signup process is helping you understand your audience. If it's not, consider adding some fields in order to have info that will help you send segmented emails. Those are great tips, Cole. If you're still feeling unsure about who your audience is, surveys in MailChimp can help you understand more about your audience, their needs, and perception. Focus on your message and keep things straightforward. The most effective emails are clear, easy to understand, and have a focused call to action. It can be tempting to add lots of information to your communication, but too much clutter can overwhelm customers and drive them away. Seek inspiration from other brands and companies you follow. If there are other businesses you admire out in the world that are doing things well, take note. Sign up for their emails and pay attention to their subject lines, email layouts, and stylistic choices. There may be some takeaways that you can apply to your own marketing. Analyze your data to see what's working. After sending a campaign, your reports can help you understand the best times to send as well as what subject lines and content your audience is responding best to. Always test and make changes as you go. We say this a lot, but it's important to remember. Before you send, test by proofing your content and sending your campaign to test volunteers, like other members of your team. The more you test, the more you get to know your audience and what they find relevant. And having covered these tips and best practices, we finish running through the basics of sending an email campaign in MailChimp. And with that, we've wrapped up today's webinar. Stay tuned. You'll be receiving a recording of this tutorial and some follow-up resources. If you've enjoyed this webinar, we also have a variety of other ones available to help you use MailChimp. Check out MailChimp.com workshops for more information. And if you want more video content, check out our YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us today.